Hello, 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 and welcome to the show where if it ain't gray, then go away. That's right, today is an artifact combo, my favorite, and we're showcasing something special from War of the Spark 2. But first, let's see our card for today. Today we have Mycosynth Lattice. For 6 mana, you get an artifact that makes all other permanents artifacts. Well, this is going to be fucking fair, isn't it? Also, all cards that aren't on the battlefield, spells, and permanents are colorless, and players may spend mana as if it were mana of any color. So let's just get to it. All your opponent's things are artifacts, including their lands. Let's fuck stuff up. Right off the bat, you can lock down the game easily with Mycosynth Lattice. Because everything is an artifact, Null Rod and Stony Silence just lock out the game. Even though lands don't say anything, they technically look like this, and have an activated ability to add mana to your mana pool. So Null Rod and Stony Silence don't allow players to activate abilities of artifacts. So no lands can tap for mana, and no permanents can do anything significant if they have activated abilities. But if you want something a little less oppressive, you can use Treasure Nabber. This little goblin lets you steal artifacts that your opponents tap for mana. So all of their lands and any permanents they control that can add mana to their mana pool become yours if they tap them for mana. But you can be more specific with your stealing and permanents with Memnarch's ability. For three and a blue, you can take any artifact you want. Or you can gain control of all non-creature permanents by turning all non-creature and non-equipment artifacts into equipments with Bludgeoning Brawl. And then attach all of those equipments to Armory Automaton when it enters the battlefield. So everything but creatures now becomes yours and attached to your robot. Or if you're in a real rush, you can just use Hellkite Tyrant. This dragon allows you to gain control of all artifacts a player controls when it deals combat damage to a player. And by that point, you'll probably have the 20 artifacts you need to win the game on your next upkeep with the Tyrant's second ability. Isn't it fun when all of our opponent's things are artifacts? Speaking of other benefits you get for having a butt ton of artifacts, Inspiring Statuary allows all your permanents to help pay for your non-artifact spells. While Blink Moth Urn gives you colorless mana equal to the number of untapped artifacts you control. But it does the same thing for each player, so maybe hold back on that one. However, for a more one-sided effect, Thanos, Urza's Apprentice, can copy any activated or triggered ability of any artifact you control, or any permanent you control in this case. Feeling threatened? Well, Dark Steel Forge makes all your permanents indestructible, while Indomitable Archangel gives all your permanents Shroud. Or better yet, just use Padim. She gives all your permanents Hexproof. What do you do with all this security? Well, load up a creature with Cranial Skull Plating, and it gets plus one plus O for each permanent you control. And then you can pay white and a black with Sidri to give an artifact creature lifelink and death touch. But with Mycosynth Lattice and Sidri, you can start blowing up your opponent's lands for a single blue mana. Yeah, for one blue mana, you can make a non-creature artifact become an artifact creature with power and toughness equal to its mana cost. Well, guess what the mana cost of a land is? Nothing. So it becomes a zero-zero creature and dies. You can do this with one fell swoop with March of the Machines that turns all non-creature artifacts into artifact creatures with power and toughness equal to their CMC. But this hits your lands too, so... But again, if you want a more one-sided board wipe, an overloaded Vandal Blast destroys all artifacts you don't control, while Consulate Crackdown exiles all artifacts you don't control until it leaves the battlefield. If you're really feeling like targeting just one person though, Hercules Recall returns all artifacts one player owns to their hand. All three of those cards essentially end the game for your opponents, so it's smooth sailing from that point on. But at the end of the day, if all you want is just a less color intensive Sidri, then look at the original Karn, Silver Golem. You get a creature that can blow up an artifact land for one generic mana by making it turn into a creature with power and toughness equal to its converted mana cost. But what would happen if we gave Karn a Null Rod? You know, just like hypothetically, like we just chucked it at him and see what stuck. Oh, oh damn. Oh shit, what's going on here? Oh god, a new Karn? It's incredible, it's magnificent, it's beautiful. It's almost as good as my acting. 
Fresh from War of the Spark, we have Karn, the Great Creator. For 4 mana, you get a 5 loyalty planeswalker with the static ability of activated abilities of artifacts your opponent's control can't be activated. So it's a one-sided Nelrod. Damn. So just Kyron and Mycosynth Lattice shut down all of your opponent's lands. Kyron's plus one ability is a silver golem ability. Turn target non-creature artifact into an artifact creature with power and toughness equal to its converted mana cost. So now you can just start blowing up your opponent's already useless lands. You know, just for a uh, good measure. But finally, Kyron's neg two ability is what pushes him over the edge. You can grab an artifact you own in exile or from outside of the game and put it into your hand. This means in a casual EDH game you can grab any artifact you own. So you don't even need Mycosynth Lattice in your deck for this combo. You just get Karn, neg to him, pull your Lattice off your shelf, plop it in your hand, and that's it. Wizards just made a one card combo. And that is all the combos you can do with Mycosynth Lattice. Well, probably not all of them, but all the ones I could think of. Now, if you really like this card, you're a little bit late for the show. As soon as Karn was spoiled, Lattice spiked hard. The Battle Bond reprinting couldn't keep the price down. I'm sorry. But if you have one, or you're willing to pay the money, have fun destroying your friends. I'm sure they'll love it. Are you going to do this combo and lose all your friends? Or any of these combos? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, if you like this or any other shit I do on the King of Jank channel, like, sub, share around with all your friends, and I'll see you here next time on Combo Breakdown.